So I thought I would do a follow up from the last video I'd done about my experience in 2017 um, with having a mental health breakdown, um, reading the Bible and uh, you know, having a, an experience, finding uh, Jesus again, finding my faith and kind of continuing on with a few more things. So um, when I experienced that in hospital, I mean, to say I was grateful would be an understatement. It literally saved my life and got me through one of the most difficult periods of my life. But obviously, when I come out of hospital, um, I still struggled with my faith, with the concept of it, and I was frightened of it, and I pushed it away. And it's taken me... Um, it's taken me six years to have the courage to buy a copy of the Bible and to start reading it because I was petrified, petrified of reading it um, and petrified of um, and being honest about, you know, that's what, that's what I want to do. I want to follow my heart. Also, I want to make a point of saying I was very nervous about this for a while. I feel better now. I was very worried about upsetting other people and other people feeling that I'm trying to preach on them I'm trying to put my faith on them and I can honestly say that's that's not what I do and I don't think that's right um, maybe some people are called to do that and that's great but that's not my calling but at the same time I'm not going to be ashamed of my faith and I'm not going to be living in fear because that's not who I am and there's no amount of money in the world or fame or followers that it doesn't mean anything to me that is going to, you know, bribe me or make me feel I'm going to hide this. It's, 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 it's who I am, you know, this is, this is everything for me. When I grew up, I was a Christian, I believed in Jesus. I wasn't a perfect Christian, I'm still not. But I want to be a better Christian. And growing up, um, I had friends from all different backgrounds. I always treated everyone how I want to be, how I wanted to be treated. I tried my best. So for me, I respect other people's faiths, and, and I think that's the right thing to do. That's what, I, that's what my faith teaches me. But nonetheless, I'm proud of myself because having the courage to go and buy a copy of the Bible and to start reading it, um, and not reading it from a place where I feel like I've got to read it to tick boxes and where it's not genuine, taking my time. I'm doing this for me. I'm not doing it to tick boxes. So this was a huge anxiety for me. It really was. Um, and now it feels really good because I've got a good relationship with God again in my faith and it feels nice and balanced and I don't push it on people unless someone actually asked me, unless someone said, no, I really want to know, you know, can you tell me about your faith and what it's done for you? Then of course I'm, I'm a kind person, I'll share it. But I don't believe in pushing things on people when they don't ask because that's like, you know, that's like bullying people and it's not right and I wouldn't like someone to do that to me. And there were times where people did do that. Um, I could forgive it now, even fellow Christians were very forceful and I felt that they were really judging me and making me feel terrible and I don't think for me that's not what my faith teaches. I know that we all judge at times, I do it. So I'm proud of myself having the courage and it's given me a lot of strength um, because it, I did make a promise and I've always, I've tried to do what my dad's always taught me as a man, to, if I make a promise to someone a friend or my mum or whoever or, 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 or God, I try to honour that and have, and have the courage to do it. So, um, you know, I said that I would keep, you know, with my faith because I didn't want to feel like, well, I'm only, I only go to God when I need his help and when he gives it to me, I just edge him out and continue. And I did that for many years in my life. But of course, live and learn, forgive. And now it's given me so much stability on days where um, you know, like all my clients or any of you, where I get really frightened, I get very anxious and I just feel lonely or stressed or sometimes I struggle with being very happy, very calm um, because of my past and my triggers and things like that. So it's making me a better person and it's, um, this is actually helping me to, to stop judging people and be less judgmental and that's kind of where I was in my earlier life until I fell off and through my own ignorance and my own um, selfishness and irresponsibility and, and, all, and greed and the rest of it went down the wrong direction. So, um, yeah, and it's, it's weird, isn't it? These fears we build up, and I do it, it doesn't even feel scary. It was the story in my head. It was building things up. But I also believe in timing. I, I needed time, and I feel that... Um, I just feel that, um, you know, Jesus, God's been really patient with me and I might not have been ready for it in, in 2022, 21, etc. Lady that I bought this from uh, was lovely, lovely lady in the shop. 
So um, yeah, I'm just gent gently reading it, and it's um, challenging, but but nice as well. It's given me a lot of strength. I just like having it in my house. A lovely copy. So um, what what else is there that I wanted to touch on today? Yeah, I'm going to share this. So. In 2017, I went through a lot of processing and thinking and real heart-to-heart -heart and real mental torture, wonderful bits of peace, turmoil, all of it, the, the whole 360. And I remember at a certain point um, in hospital, and when I left hospital, when they first let me out, and I was, um, you know, I was staying in a temporary accommodation before I got this place. And I remember, you know, really... The question was asked to me, the question in my own heart was do I like the way that I treat people, the way that I am, just in general with everyone? And it was hard, you know, it was hard, it was heartbreaking, but the answer to that question was no, no, I don't like the way that I, I treat people, regardless of, I've said before, and, and I appreciate it, it's nice, it can be flattering, regardless of many people saying that I was lovely and I really helped them and I treated them well, and I, of course, I did treat a lot of people well, but generally in my heart, could I honestly say, could I look myself in the mirror in 2017 and some of the years before that, could I honestly say, and could I say to God, I really like the way I, I treat people? The answer was no. So then it was like, well, I could, why don't I start changing it? And that's what I've been doing since 2017. My faith has helped me to do that, you know, uh, Christ has helped me to do that. And good people, family, a lot of you, People that don't even know me, people that have got no idea that they've helped me in my life, my nan and myself. Times in my life where I could honestly say I really loved the way that I was with that person, how I treated them. So that question um, broke me down and, and broke my heart and made me feel ashamed and really guilty and remorseful for the way I was um, when I was in that stage of my life for those years but it also made me excited and my mentor as well Jeff played a huge part um, in gently helping me to really see who I am as a person and to helping me to have the courage to find my faith um, in such a um, genuine non-judgmental way and that's when I thought right I need to change. I need to get back to the way I was when I liked the way that I treated people. I liked how I was with everyone, everybody, people that I didn't even know, someone serving me coffee, just people from day to day, friends, whoever, whoever they may be. Now, of course, that doesn't mean just be a pushover. Of course not. Of course, you've got to have healthy boundaries, but I know what that is, balance. And I started to do that, and I'm, I'm pleased, I'm really pleased with myself, the progress that I've made from 217. And like I said in my last testimony, you know, my relationships with people have massively improved. I'm still working on it, I still want to be a much better person in every way. But it's just the best feeling in the world, because for me personally, when I had thousands of pounds coming in from running my business, and I had, you know, what we call a small amount of fame, and apparently a lot of people like me and all, all the stuff. And I'm not going to say that I didn't enjoy some of that. Now I could say that I didn't enjoy that. But that would be lying in regards to how I felt back then. But um, I just felt worthless, empty, lonely and terrible. And I don't just mean that selfishly. I felt heartbroken that I wasn't um, kinder to people. That I weren't more sincere. I weren't more caring. Uh, I, was, I, I just was um, just tore me apart. Interestingly enough, I'm in the gym today. I had a great workout, had a great weekend, great time with my friend. And I just have a chat, you know, just people in the gym. I was having a nice chat as a guy in there, you know, just people in the gym that you get to know. I just enjoyed the conversation. When I come away, obviously, I didn't let him see. We just had a you know, nice chat. And I, my eyes started watering and I was almost in tears because I was like, do you know how good that feels? Just to be kind to people and not paranoid or... You know, not feeling that you have to want something or be something or being defensive and just to treat people well and just to come away from that situation and say, you know what, I'm actually proud of myself. I'm actually proud that I had the courage to follow, um, to follow my faith and just 
follow what my family told me, find myself again and just relax and enjoy life and chill out and just be open and just be nice to people um, and not just to be so angry inside, not to have that anger and that paranoia and thinking that people have to be perfect towards me, being so judgmental towards others and myself. So can't put a price on that, really, really can't. So I, I had a lot of that and that gave me massive gratitude. That actually, in hospital, those realizations, you know, like I, I time traveled, the great times I had with my dad, my brother, my mum, friends, you know, uh, I won't say the name out of respect, but you know, one of the um, best girlfriend that I ever had relationship where, you know, I treated her well, she treated me well. Um, friends, clients, friends from the past, you know, childhood friends growing up, people down in the boxing gym, it got me in that place. It got me in that place of love. It, there's, there's, no, there's no messing around there. There's no trickery. There's no fakeness. There's no ego. It's just, it's genuine from the heart. And for it to bring me back there, that saved my life. That saved my life. Because the other place I was in, um, for many of the years, I was in absolute darkness and turmoil. And I remember one day, this is quite humorous, but it, it really was real. I can't remember the exact day, but I'd been successful, had some fame and some money and up and down, you know, happy one minute. I remember just being nice off and just saying, you know what, I'm so unhappy in my life. I'm so lonely. I've got no love in my life. I don't love myself. I've got no friends, no real friends. I don't really have a proper relationship that I want. I don't feel like I've got a good relationship with my family, even though that's not true. I'm just so lonely. I was feeling sorry for myself, of course. And the answer was, well, of course, because I'm not in a good place and I'm not being how I was before. And that's when I thought, well, I kind of, I kind of speak, well, Jonathan, why, why don't you change it? And I was like, well, come, because I'm, I'm scared to death. I'm paranoid, I'm frightened. I'm scared of letting go of um, the identity of who I don't want to be anymore and who I'm not. You know, the, um, the sex addiction, the addiction to fame, the addiction to social media likes, the addiction to trying to be perfect and constantly being successful. I just said, you know, I'm sick of it. I don't want it anymore. I don't want it from that place. Uh, it's nice to be successful. It's nice to make money and it's nice if people are inspired. It's great to make a YouTube video if people like it, but not from that place. Not from that place of darkness and fear. I can't do this anymore. And this is not judging anyone else. This is nothing. This is my. This is me. I, I can't do this anymore. I want to get back to being Jonathan. You know, I want to enjoy my life and have love in my life. And I had that growing up. And it's not about money. It's not about fame. Those things are irrelevant. You know, money comes and goes. But this is, you know, this is really meaningful. So I'm sure a lot of you get the gist and the moral of the story of what I'm saying. As I said before, if you don't understand it, that's that's completely fine. That that that's your right. So that you know, there was that. And then it went on to how grateful I am for good people because without good people, without, you know, without the goodness in people, with all their flaws and vulnerabilities and mine included, how on earth would I have got through that time? I weren't strong enough. I said in my life, I couldn't do it. I would love to sit here and say, I'm a tough guy. I could get through that and get through anything. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. That was too, and that was a fight that I couldn't win. I had to give up. I had to follow what um, that experience I had in that cell in the Gordon Hospital when I was reading the Bible. And I didn't even quite understand what I was reading, but I was reading uh, the King James's Bible. That's why I kind of bought this again. Um, I just felt like I had to get that version again to kind of reconnect and continue on to see where it goes. So the way I was treated by a lot of people was just... Um, 10 out of 10, man. It was just, it was just second to none. It was just class. So, you know, it restored my faith in humanity and my faith in myself and makes you feel great that, you know, that we can change. We can, even if we've been good and we've lost our way, we can come back. So, um, sharing this story, I hope it makes people feel the way that I was made to feel when I was in hospital, when I was in a terrible place and I felt loved and I felt that I'm, I feel good again. There is, there is hope. And then I started to work on it and life has gotten better and better in every way. And funny enough, I've, I've wrote something that, 
beautiful that I'm going to read to help people to improve their relationship with money because I've learned a lot about money and relationship. Being that I had such a bad, toxic relationship with money, even when I was making money and I was successful in my old life, because I had such a bad relationship with myself. And now I've got a way better relationship with money because, um, thank God, my relationship with myself has massively improved and with people. And it's an ongoing process every day as we speak. And my purpose and those experiences in hospital was to change my teaching, my ways, and do what I'm doing now. Uh, help people, help men and women that have got anxiety to build confidence in themselves, to live a better life and go and live their dreams and, you know, and do what they need to do. And I'm sure they're going to figure that out because I can't tell people exactly how to live. But I could share my story and do what Les Brown done for me and you can go and follow your heart and be the person that you can be. Um, so, yeah, I think that's it. I'm just trying to think, is there a few more things? Let's see what comes. Um, that's what actually come. You know, it's not easy changing as people know it and I've known. I've changed a lot of things in my life. That's what, what I learned in hospital and I'm still learning now. And it's weird. Like reading the Bible put me onto things that I've learned for all different times in my life. Boxing, good people, my mistakes, people that are more confident than me, people that bullied me. A collection of all different experiences and people from my life traveling, facing fears, good times, bad times, feeling suicidal, feeling amazing, feeling great. I really learned to slow down and be patient, you know, be patient one step at a time. Because if you try and do everything in one day, you just get scared and overwhelmed and you can't do it and then you just go back into your addiction. So be impatient with yourself, even with like, well, I want to be a kinder person. That is a great virtue to live by, but one step at a time. Because if you try to be kind in every way, you just, it just get, you're going to get stressed out, probably going to get upset. So I learned to slow down. And actually, when you slow down and relax more, you can actually be kinder and be yourself and enjoy who you are and other people. Does that make sense? So that in and of itself is a great social practice and a great practice when you're training or even speaking right now. And I just consciously caught myself there and said, slow down, Jonathan, you know, um, control that anxiety, relax, be yourself and have fun and enjoy it. So I'll leave all of you of that and let's see where it goes um, so yeah, thanks for listening to my story and I'm confident that it's going to help a lot of you to lessen your anxiety, improve your confidence and live your dreams.